Have you ever wondered if your pennies are actually worth any money? Well, we're gonna show you what you can look for on your coins that can give them some extra value. So welcome back to Couch Collectibles. Hope you guys are having an awesome day as always. Let's just hop into this one. All right, starting off first with some older pennies and then we'll get more modern here as we go. We'll get up until uh, the 1980s. This is a 1918 wheat penny that has been struck through debris. So it is a strike through error. You can see that there on the obverse of the coin there at the top of the penny. Now this penny is graded by Annex at a Mint State 60 and the coin ended up selling for $35. So not a super valuable coin, but it's a $35 penny. Now, next up is a 1919 wheat penny. So this is uh, pretty common to have a 1919 penny in this condition. However, all the value for this coin is going to be in the die break, which you can see there on the rim of the coin there at the bottom of the penny. So that is uh, the extra metal there on the rim of the coin. That's considered a die break or a cud. Die break, cud, same thing. That will give your coin some value. You can look for those on all kinds of different coins. This coin in this condition sold for $56. So had it been a high mint state grade, not a grade of an EF45, it would have sold for you know a lot more money than $56. Here's a 1935 wheat penny that has been multi-struck. So as we zoom in on the coin, you can see that mint error, pretty obvious type of mint error. Uh, when you're inspecting your coins, you can see the design twice there as it was multi-struck. Uh, this coin ended up selling for $180 at auction. It is graded by NGC at an AU50 brown. So your pennies will either be graded as a brown, red brown, or red. Of course, red is the best that you want. Uh, red brown's better than brown. Red's better than both of those, brown and red brown. So let's move on here to a 1935 wheat penny that was struck through a fragment. You can see that there on the obverse of the coin. Uh, pretty obvious mint error again there. This coin graded at an 8, which is a very low grade as the coin grading scale goes up to 70. 70 is the best grade you can get. This is at an 8, so it's on the low end of the grading scale, uh, which means it's not in very good condition. Uh, the, co the penny still sold for $50 at auction because of that mint error. Next up is another die break. You'll see that extra metal there at the bottom of the coin on the rim of the coin there. But at this time, it's taking place on a 1936 wheat penny that is in not so great condition as well. It's graded at a VF20. Um, but we're showing you guys coins that you know you probably have in your collection that are in similar conditions. Um, but you gotta look for these different types of errors that can give them some extra value. So this coin ended up selling for $40 at auction. So something like this, you know, I would actually send to Annex as opposed to PCGS or NGC, because if you know the coin's only worth 20 or $40, you don't wanna spend, you know, $60 to have a mint error graded. You know, Annex, good grading company as well. Um, you know, they're a lot more affordable, um, but I would go through PCGS or NGC for sure uh, for, you know, a coin that, you know, that is more expensive, you know, more sought after by collectors because some collectors, a lot of top collectors are only going to collect coins from PCGS or NGC, uh, you know, graded examples of coins from those companies. You know, some people don't even collect any uh, coins that have been graded by Annex. Um, so it's all up to you. You know, it depends on the situation, depends on where you're at financially, what you can afford. Uh, you know, I say if you're getting a $20 coin graded just to keep in your personal collection, you're not trying to make any money on it, go through Annex. Uh, but if you're trying to get one graded that you're trying to resell and it's a really good coin, go through PCGS or NGC. Now here is a coin graded by NGC. This coin is um, interesting. So it was struck onto the wrong planchet. It's a 1941 wheat penny. Uh, you know, this is why you weigh your pennies. This coin weighs 3.3 grams. It's only supposed to weigh 3.1 grams at the time uh, in 1941 when this coin was minted. Um, so 88% copper, 9% zinc. Planch it here. This coin sold for $159 at auction. Next up is a 1943 steel penny, the only year that they produced the steel scent in 1943. Uh, this has environmental damage, so it doesn't really have a grade, but the coin has a mint error. It has been broad struck, which you can see around the rim of the coin. So, you know, had the coin not been damaged, it would have sold for more money, but this penny still sold for $77 at auction. 
graded by NGC. Next up is another steel penny and it has a die break. Just like the die breaks we looked at previously on the other wheat pennies, this is on a steel penny this time. Uh, the coin does have some corrosion, so it's not uh, in the best condition. The coin still sold for $74 at auction. Moving on to a 1943 steel penny that looks very normal on the reverse of the coin, but as we flip the coin over to the obverse, you'll see that it's been struck through a capped die. Now you can look for these types of errors on all kinds of different coins as well. This coin ended up selling for over $1,200. Graded at a mint state 63 by NGC. This next coin here is graded by PCGS at a mint state 64. The coin has been struck through thread here on the obverse of the coin, which is pretty obvious there. This coin graded at a mint state 64 by PCGS ended up selling for $192. Nice penny there. Moving on to one of my favorite pennies of this video. It's the 1947 wheat penny. It looks normal on the reverse. But here on the obverse of the coin, you can see that it was struck through a retained uh, piece of scrap. I mean, that is a super unique type of mint error. Now, this is a good example of what I would have sent to PCGS instead of sending to Annex. Even though PCGS is going to charge more to have a coin like this graded than Annex, this is a coin that would be worth sending to PCGS. It's going to be worth more in a PCGS holder, in my opinion, and it's going to sell easier to collectors uh, that would want this coin. This coin ended up selling for $324 at auction. Moving right along to a 1955 wheat penny graded by PCGS that has been broad struck. So it's got that broad strike, which you can see around the rim of the coin and it is in excellent condition. It's graded at a mint state 66 red. This penny ended up selling for $228. Next up is a coin that I really like as well. It only sold for $65 at auction, but it's a 1959 penny that has a, a reverse lamination error taking place here. So pretty cool mint error there. This coin, like I say, sold for 65 bucks, even in this condition. Next up is a 1966 Lincoln cent that has a lamination on the obverse of the coin. Unfortunately, someone cleaned the coin, so that will take away some value from it. So do not clean your coins. Not a good idea. This coin ended up selling for around $50, even though the coin has been cleaned. Now this next coin sold for over $4,500. Super rare mint error coin here. It's a 1968 penny design that was struck on to a 1967 Costa Rica 10 cent coin. So you can see both designs of the Costa Rica coin along with the Lincoln cent design and that's why the coin is super rare and valuable. Uh, you're not going to come across an error like this every day, that's for sure. Maybe never in your lifetime. Uh, $4,500. Here's a 1970 Lincoln cent. Now this is a S mint mark and it does have that large die break this time taking place at the top of the penny. So this coin ended up selling for $129 graded by Annex. Here's a 1975 Lincoln cent that has a die break as well in much worse condition graded by Annex at a 61 brown. You'll see that die break there though at the top of the Lincoln cent. This coin only sold for around $40 at auction. And then here is a very large die break. You can see here on the left side of the 1975 penny. Um, man, that's a, that's a good one. If you find ones like this, they, they sell pretty easily. Now this is graded at a 64 brown by NGC. If it was a 64 red, of course it would sell for more money. This coin in this condition sold for $111 at auction. Now here's a 1983 penny that has a very obvious type of mint error, right? It's got a brockage. Yeah, I think the error kind of speaks for itself, right? It's uh, graded by PCGS here in a mint state 63 red. And this penny ended up selling for $79. And then here is a much more obvious type of mint error. The coin has been double struck and that second strike 40, is 40% 40 off center. Uh, and that second strike is flipped over, of course. So we see the obverse and the uh, reverse designs here on this penny. So this coin ended up selling for $3,600 out of the Fred Weinberg collection. Very nice mint error, 1998 Lincoln cent. 
So always check your coins closely, inspect your coins closely. You never know what you may find in a coin collection that you inherit or a coin collection you purchase. Uh, I've found errors uh, in both. And of course, you can also go to the bank, coin roll hunt, get rolls of coins, search for mint errors, search for key dates and things like that. Uh, things that will give your coins some extra value. So feel free to check out the rest of the videos here on the page. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Feel free to check out the videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I'll see you guys in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles and this is where I disappear.